So I've got I've got some reactant. We're just going to make it. It's, it's got this name 500 ml, and then I got another one that is 1,000 ml. And uh, and what we're going to call we'll call this A, and we'll call this B. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take I'm going to I'm going to make some I'm going to take some reactant. I'll have blue food coloring water. Oh, I'm pretty close to 250 mLs. And I'm going to add that. So now I have my. So I'm going to set out the siphon. Just seeing if you're paying attention, right? So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I, I just have a syringe and it's the uh, size tubing I picked, just convenient fits on there. So and what I'm going to do is, actually what I'm doing here is I'm increasing volume. So when in volume increases, what happens to pressure? It decreases, but the pressure out here is now higher than in there. So basically air pressure is pu pushing this. Now I'm not I'm not pulling, and really, I'm, it's, but it's the air pressure that's pushing this as I increase the volume. Now I have. Does anyone know what these are called? Now, and what happens is, is they're flat. They don't cut. They got. Uh, um, they're rough, and they're little. They're locks. And yeah, they actually use this to stop bleeding. Actually, sometimes when they're doing surgery, they will. Do this and clamp it off. It's got a special name. It's called a hemostat. And what I'm going to do is try not to let much air into this. So I'm going to use the hemostat. Because if I let this go, what's going to happen to the liquid? It's just going to go right back in, right? So what I'm going to do is I have to get it below the level of this liquid. And what we're going to do is pretend that this is, you know, this is not real chemistry going on here. You know, we've already discussed there should be a re, uh, you know, reaction going that way and reaction going that way. Can't really do that. But this shows a lot of stuff. So what I'm doing here, and you notice it's going down pretty fast. And let's watch what happens to the rate as it goes down. So uh, I put 250, I started off with 250 over here. We've got 250 and zero. I think it's about, it's still going down in there. In a minute, uh, uh, one of you guys, uh, I'll set this up and you guys will give me some readings here. And we'll record some information. Got about done, right? One of you gents, please. So give me, uh, for A, what do you got? Eighty-seven. Yeah. Okay. And for B, it. Yeah. Let me. I. Okay. What's the other one, sir? Okay. One forty-eight. So. Now. We've got, you know, we can imagine that it's going both ways. So now what I'm going to do is going to add more, some more reactant. Let's see, can you do another 250? Okay, I'll set it right down there. Pretty good. So I'm going to add some more. So I'm kind of putting stress on the, the equilibrium here by adding more reactant. Now it's going to relieve the stress, go back to equilibrium. Okay, another reading, sir. 
177. Okay. Okay. We'll do it one more time. Okay. Four oh nine. Four five nine. Okay. Now, everybody, from last night. AEQ is equal to what? Products over reactants. So, someone get a calculator. Got a calculator out? KEQ, what's it for? Uh, obviously, we can't do it for this because we're not at equilibrium. Uh, what is it for this one? 1.701. Oh, we got to make three things. What for, for this one? Uh, 1.72. 1.71. So it looks like it's about 1.7. So you notice each time we edit, we, we, we reach the same uh, equilibrium value. Now, I was stressing the system by adding more uh, reactant. What could else could I have added to this? More product. Let's see what happens. So this time, I'm instead of there, you now we're going to say both the reactant product are blue. Okay, this isn't real chemical, but it, it shows some nice principles here. So I'm going to add 250 mL to this side. And see what we get. Anything with air? Let's do it. Another bath. Another reading through the A. Calculator, someone. So I'll go right somewhere around here. Generally, all reactions have a little bit of the reverse component, but there's some ways to, you know why reactions might continue to go. Some are more uh, product favor. Some are actually, you know, this way. This is very up. It's uh, we have more product. We have K is greater than than uh, one, but uh, we could have it. You know, it's kind of how we want to look at the reaction sometimes. So we'll look at the reaction this way, and then now the, the K and Q is the inverse of that. It'd be less than one. Now let's look at this particular reaction. Uh, H2O, H2O2. What's the name of that, guys? Hydrogen peroxide. Remember, I used that in the liquid um, nitrogen demo. So if I take H2O2, what are the products of this? Water. So we get water, and this is the liquid. Plus, what do we else we get? And he said O2. What state would it be in? Gas. Yes. And we'll say this is a liquid, it could be dissolved in water also. When the gas comes off, what's it going to look like? It's going to be bubbling. Okay, that's what I all want to get is then you'll see bubbles. So watch what can happen is there is probably a reverse component of this. But watch what I'm going to do here. And this is what happens is a lot of reactions, unless they're gaseous reactions they're doing in the gas state. The gases will bubble off. So what happens is, is I'm constantly removing some product. So let's do that. I'm going to rig this up where we'll pretend here that somehow, or some reactions, you have precipitates occurring. So when the precipitate uh, falls out of the solution, it's no longer there as a concentration. So what I'm going to do is 
somehow have a way to remove the product. And let's say, you know, I've, I've got my tinker truck, I want my product, and I want to keep pushing. So I'm collecting my product here or I'm draining it. And so see what's happening is I keep removing product. I'm kind of putting uh, stress on this side, but see what's happening? I'm, I'm actually forcing the reaction going forward. So this is why this reaction keeps going. Probably if I sealed it up, the pressure would start increasing. And when the pressure got high enough, it would actually stop this reaction. It would reach an equilibrium. But if I keep removing product, either through gas or some reactions go, uh, you have a precipitation, the reaction continues. So you could actually force a reaction to go uh, to completion by removing the product or one of the products. Keeps keep going. See, like this, I'm letting the I'm letting product me somehow leave. So it doesn't it doesn't reach equilibrium. Although eventually what's going to happen here is I'm going to, once I lose my siphon, now it's going to start building up because I just lost, I lost the siphon.